Hi everyone, uh, I'm actually showing my face today for this video uh, because this is going to be a bit more of a talking head uh, sort of mini lecture on the history of what we're doing here today. Um, so I want to talk about what is ludomusicology? What is the history of ludomusicology? How is it practiced today? Um, so ludomusicology is a very young academic discipline. The term was coined in 2007 by Guillaume Laroche, a uh, Canadian researcher at the University of Alberta. Uh, and to sort of break the word down, there are sort of three big parts of it. Ludo musicology. I'm going to take the music part as sort of self-evident, even though it definitely is not in a cultural sense. Um, and focus on the other two halves of the word. So, ology, you know, very famous, is from the Greek, uh, logia. It's a sort of suffix that indicates the study of. So, archaeology, um, biology, musicology, etc. The academic study of a topic. Ludo comes from the Latin, uh, the word ludus, or game. So, very simply, the study of game music. Um, it's a little bit more than that. It's not just the study of music in video games. Uh, a lot of formulations also kind of use it to refer to a kind of playful musicology. Uh, as we talk about in sort of Unit 1-2, there are connections between music and play. You know, music is playful, um, the word play or various sort of versions of it, like spiel in German, um, we use this word play to say to perform a piece of music, to play a piece of music. Um, there's, you know, both are highly coordinated physical movements. Um, both in a lot of cases are, are sort of looked at as, as involving a lot of freedom. There's improvisation, there's creativity, uh, sort of in both music and games. So a playful musicology or gameful musicology, um, the study of the ways in which music can be playful, and also the study of music in games. Almost always has been video games because they tend to have music with them. Um, wouldn't necessarily have to be. Uh, there are, you know, musical games of other forms like 18th century sort of dice composition games and things like that. But in general, uh, what we'll be concerned with in this course, for the most part, is the study of music in video games. So I mentioned the discipline is very, very young. Um, you know, 2007 for sort of the coinage of the word. As, a, as an organized academic endeavor, it probably starts with the Ludomusicology Research Group which is at ludomusicology.org. Their first conference is in 2012. They're based in the UK. Then uh, in 2014, we had the North American Conference on Video Game Music. Since then, um, we've had the founding of this, this acronym with too many S's, the study, the Society for the Study of Sound and Music in Games. And uh, there's also an Australian ludomusicology society. But overall, very, very young in academic terms. 2012, 2014, you know, it's still less than a decade. It's only 11 years since the word was sort of invented. Um, so as a consequence, it's possible to cover a lot of ground in a single semester or a single summer term. Um, and a lot of the work that's been done so far in, musical in ludomusicology sort of follows in a couple of specific areas. And luckily, in only one summer term, uh, we're able to give a pretty good overview of that. So I want to break down a couple of the categories that we're going to read a lot from and that we're going to spend a lot of time talking about, and then maybe lay out a couple of new directions that people might want to explore for their uh, end-of-term research projects. So, uh, 
perhaps it's no surprise that one of the big topics that people have chosen to write about is music video games. Dance Dance Revolution, Guitar Hero, Rock Band, DJ Hero, things like that. Um, you know, it's kind of a natural fit. And some of the earliest essays in ludomusicology, even predating the word by a couple of years, have been on how is music represented in video games? How have people taken music, which, uh, you know, is something that is usually rehearsed and uh, happens kind of live, how have people attempted to create games that, that uh, imitate music or that represent the process of playing music or that use music in their gameplay? Uh, so there was a lot of early work in that. There was technical work. There was sort of analysis of the player experience. Um, scholars like Kiri Miller and Will Cheng have done um, sort of ethnographic work. You know, ethnography is sort of field work and interviews and uh, discourse analysis of how do people who play these games talk about them, think about them, feel about them. Um, we're going to read studies by both of those authors, Kiri Miller and Will Cheng, during the summer term uh, that sort of delve into, um, you know, Kiri Miller talks about sort of guitar hero karaoke nights and how do people talk about this and why do they go and what do they get out of it. And uh, Will Cheng has some analyses of the musical aspects of online role-playing games. What do you do when you play as a bard and uh, sort of have the ability to play music? How do musical communities grow up in online games alongside of raiding and, and uh, grinding for levels and all that other stuff that you do in an online game? Um, so ethnography and actual sort of interviews with people has been a major aspect of uh, the study of music video games. There's also sort of organology, um, you know, which is the study of the actual instruments, the study of plastic instrument design, you know, as a game controller, as a musical instrument, how are they sort of suspended between both worlds? How do they bring them together to create a compelling experience? Um, and finally, there have been a lot of studies of sort of pedagogy, you know, teaching, education, how might music teachers use music video games or how can they learn from the techniques of music video games or be warned by the techniques of music video games? Um, what is the relevance for the teaching of music that we might learn from games like this? Next sort of uh, category is the history of game audio. So how has the technology developed? From the very beginning, you know, games were silent. Um, there were, you know, even before video game arcades, there were pinball arcades. They used sound. Then with the advent of commercial games in the early 70s, um, they started to incorporate first very, very simple sounds, sometimes experimental or just sort of thrown together solutions for sound. Um, these grew into sound programming interfaces that we're sort of more familiar with from retro um, 1980s systems, um, eventually into the full fidelity of the 1990s. Um, these eventually grew up into the full fidelity of the 1990s in terms of CD quality audio real recordings, uh, full motion video that was a big fad in games in the 90s and sort of continues to develop and uh, the musical styles of video games that have that have tracked from very simple backgrounds that often used pre-existing you know classical music, um, things like that, up into full out Hollywood style productions where you have a professional composer and a full orchestra. Um, so a lot of work in this field has tracked how that has developed. There's also a lot of work on interactive music. You know, the fact that games are interactive, that the narrative can change, the outcome, success or failure can change, the order in which players do things can change. Um, there have been a lot of studies of how do musicians and programmers 
manage this? How do you create music that reacts to what the player does, that sort of immerses them or reflects what they're doing in the environment? How do you, uh, you know, develop systems that can go from sort of calm, relaxed exploration music to tense action or fighting music, things like that. So there have been a lot of analytical studies of how game developers and composers accomplish this, how they make it as seamless and immersive as possible. There have been a lot of studies of sort of musical meaning, you know, musical narrative. Narrative, meaning, um, representation, how have uh, composers chosen to score games that reflect certain cultures, games that reflect historical events. You know, we're going to read about the Civilization games, and we're actually going to talk with the author, uh, Karen Cook, who is a Gettysburg alum. We're going to talk with her about one of her articles about sort of the representation of, of nationhood and of historical events in the Civilization games using actual pieces of either classical or folk music from those cultures. And uh, there's also been a lot of studies of classical music because there's this very close relationship between games to sort of film and from film to opera. And uh, in the early history of game music, there was a lot of classical music because it was sort of there, it was public domain, it was well known. Um, and then that ties into today when there are a lot of classical music concerts. You know, local orchestras are uh, really bringing in new audiences by staging concerts of Final Fantasy music or Zelda music and things like that. So uh, there's a lot to be said on those topics as well. Just in closing, um, I want to think about maybe some of the topics that people have not uh, explored so much. Um, so right now, a lot of ludomusicology is dominated by certain platforms. Um, so one opening for new research would be to write about the music and sound of lesser known platforms. Um, there's a lot of stuff about Nintendo of various, various, uh, generations of Nintendo from the original to the Super Nintendo through the GameCube and the Wii. Um, there's a lot about PC games. There's a lot about sort of contemporary, you know, PlayStation 3, Xbox 360 and newer uh, platform games. Um, but there's a lot less on sort of the Sega Genesis, um, you know, all of the various things like ColecoVision, ZX Spectrum, like all of these systems in the 70s and 80s. Um, less successful things like the Dreamcast, uh, the Sega Saturn. There's a lot less about sort of lesser known platforms. Um, so there's a lot of space there to explore things that people may not have written about yet, since the, the field is kind of biased towards PC gaming and um, Nintendo platforms. There's some on mobile games, but there's also a lot more space uh, on mobile games, particularly sort of casual games that actually make up a huge uh, chunk of the gaming industry right now. It's not written about a ton. Um, there's a lot of space for analytical studies of individual soundtracks. Um, uh, soundtrack studies, I'll call this. There's a lot of space for uh, studies of individual games. You know, there, those do exist, but obviously there are tons and tons of games that haven't been looked at. And the ludomusicologists tend to sort of focus on the technology. They focus on sort of milestones and development. They focus on interactivity, you know, interesting cases uh, where music is used in unique ways. But there's definitely a lot of space for, you know, studies of big popular franchises. How does music evolve across the Skyrim series or the, the Call of Duty series and things like that? Uh, there's a lot of space for close readings and close analyses of individual game soundtracks. Um, and finally, there, there are uh, a lot of genres that have been sort of neglected so far in academic study. Um, you know, big blockbuster action games to some degree is one of them. You know, Call of Duty, um, Fortnite and PUBG, huge, very popular games that have been less studied by academics. Um, there's not a lot out there about sports games. 
uh, which tend to use a lot of popular music. They tend to be really closely tied to current pop culture, but there's not a lot out there about, you know, the Tony Hawk games, the FIFA games, things like that. Um, there's not a ton about horror games um, or survival games out there. So there are other, there are a lot of other genres that people have not yet looked at. So if you're, if you're looking for um, a final project in this class, you might consider something that fits into one of these three categories, looking at games of a system that hasn't been studied very much, uh, doing an analytical or a historical or cultural study of a game soundtrack or a series of soundtracks that haven't been studied very much, uh, or turning your attention to a genre that has received a little bit less attention than, you know, music games and sort of uh, classic Nintendo games and classic PC games, which have generally gotten a lot of study so far. So I hope this helps to make the field a little bit legible to kind of lay out the terrain for a lot of the things that we're going to talk about during this uh, six-week summer semester. Um, there's a PDF that accompanies this video also if you'd like to read about this in a little bit more detail. Um, follow up on some of the citations that I gave, some of the people that I mentioned. We'll read a lot of their work, but there's also a lot out there that we won't have time to get to in this six weeks. So I hope that you'll, uh, you'll feel inspired by this and that you'll decide to dive into a little bit more, uh, a little bit more research in ludomusicology and that you'll find something interesting that fits into what you like and what you're interested in to write about for both your midterm and your final projects.